is correct. As I said in the first part of the build, I'm a little worried about the vibration of the primary driving gear. And it's only getting worse. The gearhead is making horrible noises and I thought I'd take a look inside. Yeah, the gear that I press fitted in the shaft got loose. So, I dig some scrap parts from my collection. My scrap collection. And I'm thinking, a belt drive will be nice for this. But I don't have pulleys and belts small enough to fit inside the gear case. Then I found this small sprocket and chain. They came from a broken motorcycle engine starter. Their size barely fits, but I think I can work it out. The bearing is also busted, so I will have to replace that too. Obviously, someone's already been in here. They welded the gear to the shaft for some reason. Oh well, let's get to work. I'm milling a recess in the case so the chain won't hit the wall. This is how I've been milling stuff here in the shop. It's on the cross light vise, on the drill press. It's horrible. And that's the reason I wanted to mill. That is just lightweight making way for the motor. So sorry for the noise. I have dinosaurs living in my house. Anyway, this is how it turned out. I welded the sprocket to the gear shaft and replaced the bearing too. I also shortened the chain and cleaned up the gear case a little bit. Let's assemble it.
This is definitely running smoother than with the gear. No vibration at all. I got really happy how the motor and gear case turned out. It's running really smooth. And I was excited to see it function as a mill. My hopes were all high and I was very positive that everything's gonna work out this time. But you can already see a wiggle in the shaft right there. That's gonna be the start of a grueling, painful, frustrating week for me. Here I'm using the horizontal function of the mill as a lathe to get rid of the run out on the shaft. It looks like it's working there, but it's chattering a lot and the surface finish is really bad. Although, I kept trying. And trying. and trying. It took me the whole week trying. And when I thought I'd finally done it, This time, I was really frustrated and tired. I've been spending countless hours every day just to make this mill run good. But the chatter, man the chatter. Now this is my last attempt to at least get rid of the vibration in the mill head. Now I know that that's not the only problem I'll be dealing with. But solving the millhead's chatter will be a good start. If this is not gonna work, I'll abandon this project for good. It's been consuming too much of my time and energy. Anyway, I'm just trying to make this build a little bit fun. And I'm feeling the power of the great bastard old Tony in my veins right now. Come on, man. That was a good one. Okay, let's try it again. I will have to use the forbidden technique here. There. 
Okay, guys. The quality inspector with his apprentice came to check the standard safety protocols here in the shop. I think I'm getting another notice today. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's the worst homemade dumpling. So, here it is now. That's not the final look, of course. I'm just checking if it's working better than before. Well, so far, no vibration in the mill head. Let's see how it does under load. I don't know if you can see, but the mill head is really solid. There's vibration in the cross light vise and the base itself, but the head is doing really well. Here, I'm forcing the feet to trace where the vibration mainly is coming from. And I found out that it's the post. The milling head is fairly solid now. But most of the chatter is coming from the vibration of the post. It's cast iron and somewhat thick but I guess it's only designed for drilling. So that will be the next thing I will be addressing. And I think I already have an idea how I will strengthen that post. An old friend that I have a long time ago was able to see how the huge columns on bridges, skyways, and flyovers like this are made. He said they are built differently than most concrete structures. So these bridges can handle traffic vibrations and all tensile strains. So I'm thinking of doing that here. I'm going to make a concrete base and also pour concrete in the post. But I will put a tension rod in there. It's going to be tightened before the concrete is poured. In theory, when the concrete sets and hardens, you loosen the tension rod. The spring action of this the spring action of the rod will compress the concrete even tighter and will basically be stronger against vibrations and strains. That's what I'm planning to do here. And I hope it will work. Anyway. This milling head is getting a bit heavy from those plates and pillow gloves. So I'm also thinking of putting gears to assist the lever here. And so I can also have more accurate control with the feed rate. I will do that probably in the next video. So, I hope you stick around guys. Click a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you like this video. And thanks again for watching. I'll see you all next time.